Hey everybody, Fred here at PLCGurus.net. So in the last video, we walked through the setup and installation of Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition, as well as the SimQuest InGear Net.Logix drivers that we are going to need. And what those drivers are gonna do for us is give our C Sharp applications direct access to an Allen Bradley Control Logix uh, or a variety of Allen Bradley Control Logix controllers. So we did that in the last video. So what I want to do in this video is I want to look at that installation directory, the InGear installation directory, because there are several demo projects that come with the software itself that I think are going to be useful for us to look at to see how the NetLogix interfaces work. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's get started. To get started, let's go ahead and configure our slings and make sure that we can communicate with the Control Logic controller I do have in here in the lab. So if you refer back to the first video, I kind of gave you my lab uh, setup that I'm going to be working with here. So let's go ahead and open our RS2 window and you can see I have no drivers configured as of yet. So let's go ahead and fix that right now. So I'm going to go communications, configure drivers. And we're going to go ahead and choose the Ethernet IP driver. And the default name is fine. And you'll notice I do have several uh, interfaces configured on this machine. I have two actual physical NICs or network interface cards right here. And then because I do run VMware, I, I do have a bunch of virtual adapters as well. We want to make sure we're on the same network as the controller. And if you recall from the first video, the controller is actually sitting at 172.16.10.10. So it follows that I do want to use this network interface here. So I'm going to go ahead and click apply, click OK and close. And I'm going to go ahead and browse that driver. And you can see right away the Ethernet bridge, the 10.10 .10 shows up and I just drill down to find my controller. Okay, so I think that's good. I'm going to go ahead and minimize RS link for now. And why don't we launch Visual Studio first? Let's get that up and running. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and collapse that because I do want to get a couple of windows going here. And let's go ahead and open up RS Logix 5000 now. So remember, I am using an L61 uh, processor here, and the latest firmware version we can go to on that processor is 20.04. So I'm not running Studio 5000 for this uh, tutorial. We have to actually run the RS Logix 5000 software. Okay, just so you're clear on that. So you can see I am running 20.04. And let's go ahead and drag that up, and we'll get a, a, a split screen going here. Pull that down and let's bring that over. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead, let's open up the RS Who window here, or the Who Active window. And you can see, I'm just gonna browse that to refresh. And there is my processor. And let's go ahead and get online with that processor now. Okay, so you can see I'm just running a blank test project. There's no real routines in this thing. This is just a you know, a default project that I just want to get online with so we can actually run some of the demo projects that actually come pre-installed with the InGear driver package that we installed in the last video. Okay, so I'm going to go over to Visual Studio and click Open. And now I want to go to the C drive, Program Files, and I want to find the InGear.net directory here. Okay, so I'm going to double click that and you notice here I have a couple different versions. If you downloaded the latest version, that's fine. Uh, you can follow along just as we are here. Uh, really, the later versions provide more support for uh, additional hardware, additional controllers that have been released since the time I purchased version 5 uh, until now, of course. Uh, however, because I'm using, I would say, an older uh, Logix controller, version 5 it works just fine. And you'll be able to use version 7 just as well here as well. Uh, okay, so I'm going to double click that. And then I want to see the net.logix directory. And I'm going to go into examples. And then there's a little folder here called CS, short for C sharp. I'm going to double click that. And now you can see all the solution files here. So we are running 2017 Visual Studio. So I'm going to choose the latest. Uh, the C Sharp 2012 solution file. And if I double click that, um, 
okay it wants to okay so we're going to restart the application if you get this message just go ahead and choose restart and what it's going to do is it's going to launch visual studio with administrator rights because we're working from the c drive i, I suspect okay so there it is in our um our quick pick list here so i'm going to go ahead and launch the solution file from here now and there we have it so we can see the solution explorer we have several different projects here now that we get to play with, which is great out of the box because, you know, it, sometimes when you're learning, you know, you don't know the interfaces, you don't know, you know, what methods you have access to. These demos or examples can be a great starting point to get up to speed very, very quickly. And you can see here right now, my main project is currently set at the simple project. So let's just go ahead and launch or open the the form on that just, just take a look at what it looks like okay so you can see here it's a it's a simple win forms application why don't we go ahead and try something here you know what let's run this thing in debug mode and see if we can get this thing talking to our plc to do that we're going to go up to the menu bar here and we're going to click the start or the little play button up on visual studio here and that's going to launch us into debug mode for this application. And you know what? I'm going to right click on the designer surface and go view code. And you can see here now we are in the code view of this graphical view, I, I would say, or this form view. OK, so oops. so let's go back there and now let's go ahead and bring this back up and remember or recall that our Ethernet bridge is at 172.16.10.10 and we do want to choose the logics option here now the net.logics driver package does support the micro 850 and micro 820 controllers exclusively so it does not support other micro logics type controllers such as you know the micro logics 1000 1100s 1400s all of those if you want support for those types of controllers, you will need the net.ab link driver package that I showed you in the previous video. Those slick based controllers are required to have the net.ab link driver package. Okay, enough said. We're working with Logix. We're gonna keep it on the default. My processor is in slot zero. So we'll leave that there and I'm gonna click connect. And right away, you can see this uh, was disabled previously. So I'm assuming now we didn't get any real indication that it's connected. But I have to assume we didn't get an error that we're connected. So let's just test it. So to do that, we're going to need to create some tags in our project over here. So let's go ahead and call this tag bool. We'll try a few different data types. So of course, we're going to need to make this a bool. We'll click OK. And I'm going to click Create. Controller scoped. Yes, let's keep it controller scoped for now. And let's go ahead and you know what? I want to create all of the different data types that they are referring to as atomic. So in gear refers to an atomic type are those types that are bool, a small int, an int, a d int, or a real. So those are the your atomic types. So let's go ahead and create the tag s int and let's make that a small integer. This time I'm just going to hard code it in there. Create and you know what? Let's go to the controller tag view so we can see what we're doing. And we'll go new tag again, and we're going to call this tag. We'll just make this an integer. The difference between the s int, int, and d int is really the number of bytes or bits associated to each one of those data types. I hope that's clear. So I'm going to make that an int, and really what it, what it means is we can represent larger numbers with more bytes or more words of memory to do so. Okay. So let's go ahead and create another tag. We're going to call this one tag D int now, a double integer word, and that's fine. And lastly, let's go ahead and create our floating point, which is, of course, referred to as real in the Logix controller. There we go. So this is our floating point type. Create. And there we have it. OK, so we have some tags in our, in our project now. So let's see if we can read one. So I'm going to go ahead and type in tag bool. So of course now, whoops, of course syntax will matter here. And we are selecting, we're reading an atomic type. These are the atomic types. And I'm going to go ahead and choose read. 
And good, so we did read something here. So the quality was good, it gave us a timestamp, and it read false, which zero, of course, represents a false condition. So let's go ahead now, and let's maybe change that to true. And, whoops, not true, remember, syntax, true. And let's see if it successfully writes. And you can see, in fact, it did. Now, will it interpret a true as a one here? Well, will it in, let's let's put a zero and see if we get the same effect. Yes. And a one, right? Yes. And a read and true. Okay, so let's go ahead and try some of these other data types. Let's just put some numbers in. So I'm gonna put a value. Notice the small int, like I was saying, is only one byte. The integer is two bytes, and the double integer is four bytes or 32 bits. So that's really the distinction between these different data types. So let's go in and put a number of, I don't know, 99 there. Let's go 9999 there. And let's go 9999999 there. Okay, so let's so go ahead and see if we can read these guys in. So I'm gonna go first with the essence and let's perform a read on that guy. And there you go. We read 99, let's change that now to int. Let's do a read on that, there we go. And the D int or double integer, there we go. So the last one we have to try is the real. So I'm gonna put a number in here. Let's put a number, I don't know, 3456.3445 and we'll click enter. And let's go ahead and see if we can actually read that floating point number. So we're gonna make that real and let's do a read. So you can see it did truncate that last digit, but no worries, the precision obviously is set to three decimal places currently, but we can change that. Okay, let's see if we can write a number now. So I'm gonna put in a 45.33233, and let's write that. And you can see it successfully wrote. So, so I think we're getting a little bit long in this video. So what I wanna do is I wanna cap it off here and in the meantime, I do highly recommend that you play with some of these other uh, demo projects that are here. They are really designed to teach you the different ways that you can read and write from a PLC. And as well, you'll want to check out the help file. If you click on the start orb, go down to your in your directory here. And if you launch the NetLogic 5.0 help or in your case 7.0 help it will bring you to the help file which is also very useful to get up and running very very quickly so like i said i think we're going to cap the video here because we are getting a little bit long however in the meantime between now and the next video anyway do go and play with some of these other projects and i may touch on some of these other projects as we move through the series here but like i said i think we're going to cap this one here so Again, I hope you found this video informative and please do consider subscribing to our channel, liking this video and leaving me a comment and head on over to our companion site at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net and become an active member in what is quickly becoming the fastest and largest growing community of professional engineers, technicians and technologists who all share a passion for industrial automation and controls. So this is Fred. Thank you for watching.